Hi and welcome back to this course on Memories in VLSI. In this video, we will try to understand one type of read mostly memory which is EEPROM. EEPROM is an abbreviation for Erasable Programmable Memory. Till now we have seen only two types of ROM which are read only memories. One is mask programmed ROM and one more is programmable read only memory. Both of these are not erasable and this is a ROM which can be erased through some means. So we will try to understand this in this video. Here is a picture of erasable programmable ROM. You see there is a window over here and this is basically used for uh, erasing purpose which we will see in detail. But due to this it is also called as windowed ROM because there is a window through which erasing operation is done. So this memory uses MOS transistor as its programmable component and the transistor has a floating gate, floating in the sense unconnected gate. I'll show you in the further pictures how it is floating, but it uses a MOS transistor as the programmable component. That is very important. Till now what we have seen is uh, the PROM uses fuses as its programmable component, but this uses a MOS transistor which is, which has a floating gate it's not a traditional uh, mouse transistor eproms can hold bits for at least 10 years so it has better storage permanence compared to other types but it has a little bad storage permanence compared to rom and uh, prom which almost never loses bits right and writability is comparably much better than that of the prom or uh, mask programmed rom because these can be erased and programmed multiple times to the level of thousands of times not really more than that so the speed of writing is much slower than that of the reading bits uh, and it has medium endurance to give you an example reading may take tens of microseconds whereas writing will take uh, tens of milliseconds and endurance is nothing but uh, the number of times the memory can be programmed and erased so it has medium endurance which is a um, few thousand times uh, it can be written and erased so it uses second layer of polysilicon or poly between the control gate and the channel as you can see in this figure over here the channel is over here and this is the control gate over here and there are two oxides one one is here and one more is here so this gate as you can see this polysilicon is nothing but floating because both the sides it is connected to uh, dielectric right so it is not at all connected to any metal so that it can conduct so we have two poly layers over here so how do we uh, write uh, to this memory writing happens by programmer injects electrons into the floating gate through the tunnel mechanism by applying large voltage which is 12 volt to 25 volts uh, which is also called as Fowler Nordheim tunneling because due to high electric field the electrons can actually escape from here through this dielectric to this uh, gate which is uh, polysilicon so this type of tunneling is called as Fowler Nordheim tunneling and once what happens is nothing but inject injecting electrons will effectively increase the threshold voltage of the transistors to a point that it will be always off so if threshold voltage increases significantly that means uh, definitely uh, our devices will not turn on for lower voltages which means to say that um, we are making this device switch off completely which is uh, it will not conduct so we will have a zero as output so it will be treated as zero and those channels which will conduct which are treated as ones right that's how it is programmed basically and erasing will happen by keeping this device under the uv eraser for at least 5 to 30 minutes after which it can be reprogrammed again so this is a very slow process which will take 5 to 30 minutes which is too much for modern systems also it has some other issues such as it cannot be used in environments which uh, elect which has electrical noise and uh, radiation because it will get affected due to that the electrons may uh, you know lose their energy or uh, get into higher energy states and it may create a lot of problems and because of this it is uh, not used in many products nowadays i hope you got some idea about 
erasable programmable ROM. In the next video, we will try to understand electrically erasable programmable ROM. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next video and bye-bye.